Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today we're going to talk about cast iron. I have a video up on my channel already teaching you how to season cast iron and in that video we do touch on maintaining it but I actually made that video a couple years ago and I have evolved in the way that I um, maintain my cast iron. That video is still valuable because the process that I teach for seasoning your cast iron is the same. I do it the same way um, and you should do that at least every year if not every six months. Um, and so I'll link that video down in the description. But I wanted to give you an idea kind of the day-to-day -day, um, cleaning and maintaining that I do on my cast iron. Um, I've had people in the comments request this and so we're going to talk about it today. Now first I want to point out that I have two cast iron skillets. I also have an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. Totally different ball game. We're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about our um, our cast iron skillets. I have two. One of them's Lodge brand and the other one is uh, came from Pioneer Woman. Um, and I keep these two skillets out on my stove all the time. I use them every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. And I'm going to explain why that is, but we're going to start with the one that's in the back here. So cast iron is so great because you can use it both in the stove as well as in the oven. Today's Wednesday. On Monday, I made uh, barbecue chicken potato nachos in this one. So I assembled everything um, and then put it in the oven and baked them. And so this cast iron skillet is absolutely filthy. It's got a lot of stuck on uh, stuff, uh, barbecue residue, barbecue sauce residue and whatnot. It is absolutely filthy. So first I'm going to show you, uh, I'm gonna start the process of cleaning this. And while it's sitting, we'll talk about this other skillet. So over here at my sink, which is kind of messy right now, I have this divider and I always set my skillet on the divider. I kind of balance it and then I fill it up with warm water. I know that people say water is the enemy of your cast iron, and that's true, um, but obviously you need water to wash your cast iron. So I'm going to let this fill up with hot water, and we're going to let this sit and soak. And I'm sure you're thinking, no, you're not supposed to do that, it's cast iron. Listen, here's, here's the thing. My cast iron is very well seasoned, and you can also have very well seasoned cast iron. If yours um, is rusting very easily, then it is not very well seasoned, and you need to go back to the start, and you need to do a good seasoning on it using your oven. The link is down in the description for that process. So mine has a very strong seasoning layer. Um, I'm probably going to let this sit about 20 minutes, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have forgotten and it sat like this overnight and the next morning there's no rust because it's protected by its layer of seasoning. Is it ideal to let it sit in water overnight? No, it's not ideal. And admittedly, the bottom of mine can get some rust on them because it's not as well seasoned as the inside. Um, so, you know, use your head and, and be cautious. Uh, but yes, we're going to let this sit with water for at least 20 minutes. Let's go back over to the stove and talk about this other pan. So I just used this pan this morning to cook my eggs. And as you can see here, it is not as dirty and it has a pretty good layer of seasoning. You can see there are some spots uh, where it's less so than others. This spot right here, um, the seasoning, it's not as shiny as it is kind of on the edges here. And that's because I have a gas stove and so this area here is where the highest heat is and um, and so that seasoning layer gets worked into my food um, more so than around the edges but this is still very well seasoned and very non-stick i cooked two eggs in it this morning and they slid right out onto my breakfast no problem so the way that i maintain my cast iron um, is by using it. That is a form of maintaining your cast iron. So the next time I use this, which will either be tonight to cook some sort of meat, ground beef or maybe, maybe sausage, um, or it'll be tomorrow morning when I cook my eggs, all I'll do is turn the heat on and let it warm up. I'll put either olive oil, maybe butter, um, depending on what I'm cooking um, in here, and I'll let that warm up and I even let it get to where it's smoking a little bit because when you smoke whatever um, 
uh, oil you use in your pan, it helps it to bind and bond to the cast iron. So I'll even let it smoke a little bit and then I'll cook and go on like normal. And then at the end, so for like the eggs, there was nothing I needed to do. I literally slid the eggs out, put it back down, walked away from it. If I were to be cooking uh, ground beef that leaves some sort of residue in there, you can wipe it out. It depends on what it is. If I'm cooking fish, yeah, I'm probably gonna wipe it out, give it a little bit of a wipe just with a wet paper towel and then I'll, I'll turn the heat back on and let it dry. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil or I'll just leave it and I will cook my breakfast in it the next morning. Um, before I cook the eggs, I always um, saute onions and rosemary. Um, so I will, uh, let's say I can give you an example. One of my favorite things to cook is mahi-mahi with a soy brown sugar glaze. Um, and the brown sugar glaze is very sticky and it sticks in here, just like the barbecue sauce over there, except that's a little different because that was in the oven. Um, I will add butter and my onions and rosemary and I'll just move it around and all of those, it's almost like you're deglazing your pan. All of those delicious bits from the sauce come up and get in my breakfast. So by the time I'm ready to cook my eggs, I've gotten it. It's, it's good. It's normal again. I don't have to actually take it to the sink and do anything to it. And you'll discover those kinds of little nuances as you use your cast iron because some things are too sticky and don't come out very well even with that process and they need to be taken to the sink and scrubbed out like in the case of this one over here. That one is not one that I would have been able to cook my breakfast in to get those to deglaze that pan. It's, it's burnt, it's too stuck on and I don't want that in my breakfast, right? Now this pan, when we're finished cleaning it, is gonna go on, on the back over here and it's, it's gonna have um, the oil in it. I'll show you all of that. And then this one, it usually is about a week where I'll use the same pan or it could be less than that before I end up using this for something that requires me to wash it. Um, a great example is if I make chicken pot pie this week, which I may make chicken pot pie, um, I make the chicken pot pie filling in a cast iron pan and that's flour, uh, milk, butter, chicken stock. Um, and that is a good example of something that I would wanna wash. So this pan that I've made the chicken pot pie filling in will go over to the sink and I'll be cleaning it. And then when that one that's in the sink now is clean and well oiled and ready, it'll move to the front and that'll now be the one that I use daily for my breakfast and whatnot when this one is being cleaned and then it'll go in the back. Just, did I explain that well? They rotate and that is how I've maintained my cast iron. They're both, both of them are very well seasoned because both of them get used very regularly. So, you know, you there are so many tips and tricks out there on the internet for how to season your cast iron, but honestly, the best tip of all for seasoning your cast iron, for building up that really hearty, just, amazing layer of seasoning that really truly seasons your food and cooks your food well and doesn't have the stick is to use your cast iron. And I actually think that's very poetic <laughs> and I love that about cast iron. I feel like all of both of my cast iron pans, um, th there's a little bit of heart of each meal I've made left behind. Um, in the seasoning layer and I find that so romantic and I think if I were to if give these to anybody my, my a family member a child they would really truly be getting a piece of me because it is such an accurate representation of my heart in the kitchen and my my feeding my family in the kitchen and I just it's so romantic to me and I love it so much but practically truly using your cast iron will give you the very best seasoning that you could you could have of course with some proper care as well which I'm going to show you with this pan over here all right, this has been sitting for about 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. I just pour all that water out. And usually I'll take my little spray thing and I face it kind of down so it's not like gonna spray me in the face. And I spray off as much of the residue as I can. Just to kind of get an idea for what we're working with. And as you can see, a lot of it actually, let's see, a lot of it actually came off. That's looking pretty good actually. So I thought, I personally thought this was gonna be way more stuck on than it is. And then I use the coarse side of a sponge. Um, sometimes I use soap. You, if, uh, for the same reason um, that 
you can let water sit in your pan you can use soap if you have a good seasoning built up it kind of is like a built-in protection but i still try to not use soap if i can help it um so i start by just using the coarse side of a sponge and i just like wipe it out and that also gives me a good idea for like what am i dealing with here is there some really severely stuck on stuff or is this stuff coming off really easily? And honestly, this time it just all came right off. I'll give it another rinse here. Turn it over and I, I clean, you know, if anything dripped down the sides. And then I use my hands because that will help me feel if there's any bumps or anything stuck on that I missed with the sponge that I can't see, but this feels really nice and smooth. I'm actually, I'm honestly really surprised that that came off as easily as it did. I thought that was gonna be more stuck on. And there we go. This is clean and looks great. So we take this back over to the stove. So here we have the cast iron that I used this morning. And just for now, I'm gonna move it to the back because this, I have like an attachment to this burner. Does anybody else do that? This is the burner that I use for everything. Unless I have more than one thing going at a time, this is the burner that I use. So I'm gonna put our wet cast iron on there and I'm gonna turn this on, maybe. And usually I do a little less than medium heat um, and it dries up pretty quickly. Um, sometimes I'll take my towel and dry like the handle and stuff um, while it's the middle of it's heating up. I'll run it just because I'm impatient. It would eventually dry being on the burner. Now let's talk about oil. If I have lard on hand, lard is my preferred favorite thing to season my cast iron with. It is the most natural and it just really does a great job um, giving me a nice, hard, secure seasoning layer. I love lard. Um, the second thing that I'll use when I'm doing it this way is olive oil um, because I have it. It's right here, right by the stove. Um, and so I'll put some of that in. If I'm seasoning it in the oven, I use flaxseed oil. Um, I'll link some down in the description for you. Uh, if you don't have flaxseed oil, it's worth, it's kind of expensive, but it's worth having because it really does a very, very good job um, when you're doing a hard seasoning. So now let me show you. Now that we're dry, this is what we're looking like. So let's see. This, this is looking um, very um, dry. And when I say dry, I mean not well seasoned. If I was to put an egg in here, I would be able to get it up because overall this pan is well seasoned, but um, it needs a little oil for sure. She's looking ashy. <laughs> She's looking like she needs some, some moisturizer. So I'm going to, but I do look really quick and inspect to see if I missed any food stuffs and I don't think I did. So we're gonna put her back on the heat. You could also use coconut oil. You could use avocado oil. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and I add about a teaspoon and I give it just a second to loosen up in the pan and then I start by just doing this number. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat down. I don't want to turn it off. I'm just going to turn it down and I use a paper towel to make, get in here and really make sure that I'm covering this whole thing with oil. And actually the past month or so, I've been really intentional about um, doing the whole thing, the sides and the bottom and not just the top. I had gotten really lazy and the bottom of my pants were starting to get a lot of rust. So I was like, eh, I probably need to do a better job making sure I really fully oil the whole thing because I do really, really, really want to take care of these pans. So let's not be lazy, let's do the right thing and make sure we're really caring for our stuff, right? That is one of the things that you, uh, one of the traits of a homesteader that I'm trying to implement, but sometimes it's hard, um, is taking care of my stuff. Now I'm gonna turn the heat back up a little bit because I want this to smoke. 
So it doesn't take long to start smoking, especially if you have gas like I do, it'll start smoking pretty quick. Now I was um, doing a little research online and I saw somebody in a comment section somewhere say that olive oil is one of the worst oils that you can use when um, seasoning cast iron because it has a low smoke point. And that's actually not true. I did some research about this. Um, the low smoke point is good um, when you're seasoning it this way. I don't think that I would use olive oil if I was seasoning it in the oven because it needs to be in there for such a long time. But doing this um, uh, like low key maintenance seasoning that we're doing on the stove, olive oil I think is actually a really good choice because of the low smoke point, it smokes very quickly. And like I said earlier, when you when you get it up to that high temperature, it bonds better with the surface of the cast iron. Another reason why, because that's the person said, olive oil is not a good option because it has a low smoke point and you're creating a lot of free radicals when you're heating the oil. And I've talked a lot about seed oils and the how they produce free radicals and how damaging that is for your body. But olive oil is a special exception because it has a very high antioxidants presence. There are a lot of antioxidants in olive oil. And antioxidants actually bind to and um, kind of save the cells in your body from free radicals. So the high antioxidants kind of balances out the production of the free radicals. You're going to get the production of free radicals when you're heating oil anyway because that's just the nature of oil but i think olive oil is a better option and of course lard would be the very best option so this is smoking i don't know if you'll be able to see it from the camera so we're going to turn it off and we're done this is good this is beautiful it is well seasoned it's clean um i don't wipe out the extra oil there's there's some loose oil in here because i'm going to end up cooking with this in the next couple of days let me show you the pan. Look at how pretty. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, if you are going to store this and you're not going to use it within the next week, then you need to get in here and wipe out all of the excess oil um, that's in here. The fact that there's oil that I can like move around too much. And if you don't use it, I'd say honestly a week, um, it'll go rancid. It's not going to store well. It's going to get sticky and gummy. So just wipe it out. But I'm going to leave it because I know for a fact I'll be cooking with this in the next couple of days. I'm going to move the one that's currently dirty to the front. Um, it doesn't need to be cleaned. It's perfectly fine the way that it is right now. So I'm going to continue to cook with it until it's not. Until I cook something sticky um, or something that needs to be cleaned. Until then, I'm going to continue to cook with this one. And this one will come onto the back burner. Also, um, just to give you an idea for how I use my cast iron, if I were to bake cornbread, or if I were to do a batch of biscuits, if I was going to do a cookie, uh, chocolate chip cookie skillet, um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, just last night, um, I did a... Um, uh, cast iron skillet pizza, which I have a video for. I have a video for actually a few of the things that I just mentioned. I will use the clean, well-seasoned cast iron because I don't want those things to stick. And this is already have oil in it. It's already well-seasoned. It's clean. This is the perfect cast iron uh, scenario for something like uh, cornbread or a uh, chocolate chip uh, cookie skillet or something like that. So even though this is the one that I would want to dirty so that we could rotate, this is the one I'm going to use. So I have two ready to use cast iron skillets all of the time. The only time I don't is when one of them is over at the sink full of water waiting to be cleaned. What you don't want to do, and I did this, um, it wasn't the end of the world, but it helps. You don't wanna get one of your cast iron skillets. Um, oh, I'll give you a good example. Um, if I were making chicken pot pie filling in this one, you do not want to just set it back on the stove and leave it because it's going to like be really hard to clean. It's going to stick on really hard. And the more you have to scrub your cast iron, the harder you have to scrub it, the more of the seasoning is coming off when you do that. Um, and it's fine. That's totally okay. In fact, when you do your 
yearly, your annual um, maintenance seasoning, you want to scrub it really, really hard and um, kind of get some of the old seasoning off so that you can establish a good new seasoning layer in the oven. You want to do that. Um, but when I'm in this in-between phase right now, I'm not planning on doing a seasoning anytime soon, I don't want to have to scrub it really, really hard. So you're better off cleaning it while it's warm and not super stuck on than to leave it overnight and have to clean it the next day or what have you. Also, I have a cast iron skillet out of commission, right? The longer I leave it dirty, the longer I go without having two skillets. And it limits me in the kitchen because these, these are the only two that I have in good shape right now. I've got others that I could, they'd need a, uh, a good oven seasoning. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that I gave you a good idea for how to um, maintain and keep your cast iron clean. And I also hope to encourage you um, or give you the idea that if you are cooking a lot, like I am, I cook a lot. I probably spend 60% of my day or more here in this room. <laughs> um, having two cast iron skillets that I keep in rotation and then having a cast iron Dutch oven, beautiful beautiful. I am so well equipped to do everything that I need to do in the kitchen by having two cast iron skillets and a cast iron Dutch oven. And then I also have a stainless steel pot that comes in and out of the rotation as well. Sometimes there's something on all four of these burners. Um, and I, I love it. I really, really love it. I know what I have. I know um, if I found out uh, in just a couple of hours that I was hosting a dinner tonight, I know exactly what I have because I don't have, you know, are some of my pans in the dishwasher? Are some of my pots dirty? Well, I've got this pot in the sink that has been dirty since Monday and, and it needs to be clean. You know, none of that. Like, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm ready to cook right now. <laughs> and what I did for you only took a few minutes showing you all of this and it only ever takes a few minutes. I let it sit for a few minutes. I clean it. I put a little oil in it. We're ready to go. That's it. It's so so, 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 so easy. Easier, I think, than trying to rotate things through the dishwasher um, or trying to keep up with too many pots or pans. It's all very simple. It's very minimal. This is probably one of the only places in my life where I claim to be minimal because this is it. I have my stainless steel pot and I have a little saucepan and that's it. Those are the only cooking items that I own. Um, and then obviously I've got like baking sheets and um, bread pans and things like that, but this is the extent of it and it's great. I love it. So I'm going to have, um, a, the cast iron skillet linked down in the description. I'll have the cast iron Dutch oven linked down in the description just because I mentioned it. Um, and I guess I should show you if, if there was something that you like really needed to get in there and like something was very, very stuck on, I use scrub daddy. And that's these, this happens to be a Halloween one. This is um, Frankenstein, but I have the regular ones too. I love Scrub Daddy. They come in different designs and um, they react based on temperature. So if you use cold water, uh, the sponge will be harder. And if you use warm water, the sponge will be softer. But even when it's soft and I'm using hot water, it still is like a pretty abrasive kind of rough sponge. And it's excellent for getting really, really stuck on stuff off my pants. So I'll link those down in the description as well. If you have any questions or if you feel like there's anything I didn't cover, let's talk about it down in the comments. But I hope this was helpful to you on your cast iron journey. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen today and I'll see you in my next one. Have faith and keep moving forward.